In Exodus 4, the Lord asked Moses, what's in your hand? And he said, a staff. Four hours. Four hours on a very cold winter's night in December in the year 1808. It started at 6.30, and he kept them busy for four hours until 10.30. In those four hours, they had to listen to two symphonies, a concerto, a mass, and more. It was the cold theater on, on the ravine, and the conductor was Beethoven himself. He was in his mid-thirties, and it was the premiere of two great works, the Sixth and the Fifth Symphony. Well, the program started with the Sixth Symphony first. To absorb the Sixth Symphony is quite a thing. And then there was the aria, and then the Gloria movement from the Mass in C minor, major, and then the glorious Fourth Piano Concerto. Luckily, there was an interval. After the interval, the Fifth Symphony, and then the Sanctus and the Benedictus movements of the C major Mass. The choral fantasy, and more. Well, the orchestra didn't play very well. They had only one rehearsal. And then at one point, Beethoven had to stop the concert because somebody had make, made a very bad mistake. And they had to start with the choral fantasy all over again. In the meantime, the people were shivering. It was really, really, really cold. But imagine a buffet of music with two great symphonies and all the other works. What really grabbed their attention that night was the Fifth Symphony. We all know the Fifth Symphony. Da 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 da. You know that one? Yeah? Well, Schrinder, the secretary of Beethoven, ascribed that to the knock of fate. Somebody else said, no, it was the Yellow Hammer's song Beethoven heard when he was walking in the park. Later, Beethoven tried to, in his own special way, said, oh, it's both. But it was the Fifth Symphony that was so surprising. It was the last movement. Now, we know that in a symphony, it is the motive of the symphony that is the heart of the symphony. It's those, those few notes that really makes up the heart and everything around it uh, is, is improvisation of that. It builds up. Now, up to that time, <clears throat> mostly big instruments or really major instruments were used to, to carry the motive. But in this symphony, the last movement in the finale, there was something else. Although tired, although cold, for a few moments, they were once again spellbound by this little instrument. I wonder if you can hear it. I'm going to try, let us play it.
symphony instrument. It was used in ballets and, well, before that, band instrument, but it was the piccolo. Many years later, it was said of the great Michael Costa, when he was rehearsing this part of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, that he was getting to the end, to the great finale, lots of instruments, it's a whole conversation from the one to the other. And then at some point, he stopped the orchestra. Everybody was shocked. And he asked the question, where's the piccolo? What happened to the piccolo? You see, the piccolo player apparently thought, well, I'm not that important. Why should I play? Maybe he forgot. Maybe he was asleep. But for the orchestra and for this conductor, there are no insignificant instruments in an orchestra and in any symphony. For Beethoven, this was really important. That's why he elevated the piccolo in that work so much. You can hear it. Without it, it it's, it's just not the Fifth Symphony. And later he is in this rehearsal of Sir Michael Costa, when he stopped the orchestra, he was shocked. Piccolo! Where's the piccolo? It brings me back to the Bible. Moses. In the desert, about 80 years old, he was there for the prime of his life. Moses with his past, murderer, man who fled, a man somewhere in the desert, obscure, not, not somebody to take notice of. And suddenly one day he experienced God's visit. And God, God said to him, Moses, I've got a job for you. Well, God, it's very comfortable where I am now and I'm in retiring age. So pension is actually very convenient. Moses Go back. Well, that was a big order. Tall order. Moses, go back and get my people out of Egypt. I think Moses was stunned. I can't. I, I, can't, I can hardly speak without stumbling over two words. I'm stammerer. I am not qualified. Lord, I'm old. I'm this, I'm that. And he told God everything that he is not. He's not an eloquent speaker. He's not worthy of doing that job. He's got a past and all the negative things. And suddenly God asked him a very uncomfortable question, a very silly question. Moses, what's in your hand? This? It's a stick. Can't you see? What will I do with this? It's not a polished rod or something that is really very valuable. No, it's just a stick. Well, Moses, that's all I need. That's all I need. Sometimes we tell God what we don't have. God asks us, what do you have? You see, Moses, I have something for you to do. Lord, I'm only a piccolo. Who will hear me? I only have a staff in my hand. Who will see it? What can I do with that? You see, brothers and sisters, God's, God is calling you and me here at Chengdong not to warm the pews, not just to come and worship once or twice a week and 
then carry on with doing whatever we do best. No. God calls us to make a difference. God has a symphony. The gospel is his symphony. And this glorious gospel, he doesn't give that to anyone else to conduct. He's the conductor. And you and I, we are the orchestra. And we get so intimidated by all the trombones and the timpani and the organ and all the sounds around us that we ask the question, Lord, you tell me to change the world, to do big things, to do things maybe out of my league. Maybe God does that. We live in a world that's really suffering. You and I meet people every day of our lives who are in despair. Sometimes we don't even know that. St. Francis prayed this prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon where there's doubt, faith, despair, hope, darkness, light, sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it's in giving that we receive, in pardoning that we all pardon. It is in dying that we were born to eternal life. To change the world, we don't have to get a Nobel Prize. To change where you are and to make an impact and to make a difference, we don't need maybe all the, the eloquence that's needed. We need to do what Jesus did. Interesting that it was Gandhi who said that everybody in the world knows what Jesus teaches except Christians. Ouch. Everybody in the world seems to know what Jesus teaches except Christians. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be the light of the world. Read again the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5. We get so entangled in dogma and doctrines and all of those things. And actually, God's just asking us one simple question, what is in your hand? Maybe in your and my hand, there's a piccolo. And God asked the question, where is the piccolo? I don't hear him. I miss the piccolo. Let me close by illustration. During the summer, I had the opportunity to do grief counseling and I stood at some deathbeds. Two weeks ago, I was called <clears throat> to the ICU of a hospital, and they allowed me five minutes to stand by someone who's dying of AIDS. I don't know if you've ever seen a person in that situation. He was gasping for air. His eyes were wild. He already had brain damage and the previous day a heart attack. What a sight. He was rejected and left alone by his family. Only a few friends to care. And a few times in my life I felt so helpless. What do I do? And when I was standing there, just holding his hand, I heard in my, in my heart and in my mind just the words of, 
of God to Moses. What do you have in your hand? I said, God, well, I can't talk to him. I cannot say anything to him. I'm here for five minutes. What can I do? I'm so helpless. And in my heart, what do you have in your hand? I don't, I don't ask you what you don't have. What do you have? Lord, I can pray. And even in my prayer, I don't know what to pray. And in my heart, the Lord said, well, pray as if you were him. Pray his prayer, which I did. Stumbling. Maybe you face situations where you feel incompetent and you know God wants you there and there he wants to use you. Maybe you don't know precisely for what. He's asking you, what do you have in your hand? You see, God has a symphony. God has a song to play for this world. It's a song of radical inclusion, extravagant love, relentless grace, and you're part of the orchestra. Play, piccolo, play. I want to close with a clip that I want you to see if we can get it. And just watch every instrument, how important that is. It's a part of the Ninth Symphony. But just watch that, if we can get it on.
Where there is love, Lord. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, Lord, let us show pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Make us a symphony of your praise. Amen.